Studio Players News is brought to you by the Easy Roller Dice Company. If you've been looking for some cool dice, especially those metal dice you've been hearing about, check out EasyRollerDice.com. From their gun metal dice collection to the upcoming Rolls Gold collection, they have some amazing dice. And also right now, you can save some money on your order as well. Go to EasyRollerDice.com, make sure to enter the code DDO at checkout and save 10%. That's EasyRollerDice.com, enter the checkout code DDO. CDO, and you'll save 10% immediately. Good day, everyone. This is Finally Needles, and welcome to DDO Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in DDO and on the tabletop. And please welcome my co-host from Ravenloft, Draculetta. Hey now, everybody. How's it going? Good evening. Hope everybody had a good Memorial Day today. It was, uh, at least here, it was a nice day. And it w- with it being Memorial Day, I just want to, of course thank all of the military past future and present for all of their service because if it wasn't for all of the military we wouldn't be able to do this show right now so thank you very much and thank you so let's head into our game news and we will begin with some update on discover card issues yeah over on the forums uh talero which we have not heard a lot about recently she's been fairly quiet of course she is the brand and commerce manager if you're uh, not familiar with the name she posted that there is a little bit of issue with discover card she says we are currently investigating issues with the discover card in the ddo store until we have resolved the issue we advise using a different payment method temporarily and they do apologize for any inconvenience this may cause and she will update the uh, thread over on the forums once they have more information so if you use a discover card you might want to use a different credit card temporarily. She didn't go into more details on what the issue is, but apparently Discover and uh, Standing Stone are not uh, talking well together right now, I guess. Oh, well, it's not exactly the first time I've heard of. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it's like uh, that's I just read something the other day. There was some website that I usually shop on every now and again and they posted the same thing they were having an issue with their discover card payments so yes not uncommon unfortunately sorry discover card oh well there are occasions where sometimes i where i think it is what's discover card (laughs) exactly to tell you the truth i forgot they even existed until i read this so yeah (laughs) that does tend to happen so i do have a local game shop that discover is one of the few cards that they do carry Really? Yeah. Yeah, we we care. Yes, we take Best Card, Visa, and Discover. Those are the only three. What? Oh, wow. (laughs) At least they're covering their bases there, I guess. Uh, Right. Uh, Oh, what? No, that's an American Express card. That's not on the list. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's true. That's true. Let's now head into the store sales. What's on sale this week? We have... 25% 25% off reincarnations, healing items, and spell point potions. And, of course, as always, we have a free sample, which is a pretty darn good free sample this time around through June 1st. You can get a medium guild-renowned elixir when you use the coupon code guild-renowned. You get one of those per account, so choose wisely and make sure it is the server that you want to the guild renowned to work on i think is good that i didn't have to buy the reincarnation item that i just used seeing how that was just before the sale went into effect (laughs) oh that's true that's very very true (laughs) but we'll get to that later let's head into our site news and let's get into an update on the gofundme project for the camera how are we on approaching our goal we have surpassed the goal yay no, do no part to your wonderful donation match that you, you decided to do that kind of spurred people to donate and you did come through with your end of the bargain and you matched what we got so we passed the goal so we can actually order our camera set up now so thank you very much to everybody that donated probably on next week's show or the show after that I will actually be giving thanks to everybody that donated, as I said I would do uh, if you went over on the GoFundMe page. But yes, so everybody can rejoice and jump up and down knowing that we will never have to discuss this again. (laughs) 
Because I'm sure people were getting sick about uh, us talking about it. So yeah. there you go. We've hit the goal. You guys came through big time. It was it was awesome. Uh, we got a flurry of after uh, the show came out last week. Uh, apparently, people decided, hey, this price match or this uh, donate match thing is uh, pretty cool. So I'm gonna donate now. So uh, let's donate now. We, we, we want <laughs> money to spend some money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So, hey, it worked. I guess your evil plan worked, Pine Leap. It worked. Okay. Then let's head into what's coming in from the dungeon. And the Stream of Annihilation preview is out. And what is this all about? The website, well, actually, it's not a website. Let me rephrase that. The YouTube channel Dungeon Life, uh, they do a lot of interviews and stuff with Wizards of the Coast all the time. They were talking to Watsi's Greg Tito, and he was talking about, you know, the upcoming stream of Annihilation, which we talked about last week, which, of course, is uh, coming up next week. And that's where we're going to find out the new storyline for a 5e. And uh, Greg Tito decided to drop a little art preview for us. And uh, there is some telling things in this art preview. It looks like we're in a city, a very busy city. And we have. It looks like a carnosaurus of type. I was going to say to the astute among us, we have dinosaurs. Yeah. Dinosaurs, people. Dinosaurs. So. And what parts of the realms have dinosaurs? That's what I was just. Just about to bring up, if you want to play Connect the Dots here a little bit, a couple episodes ago on Dragon Talk, which is the official Dungeons & Dragons podcast, there is a section on that show they do called Lore You Should Know. They did a segment that was featuring Cholt, which, if you're not familiar with, Cholt is located in uh, the Trackless Sea. So it is on the southernmost part of the Sword Coast. Uh, It is a very monstrous and mountainous jungle. There are savage beasts and lots and lots of dinosaurs that are on Chult. So if you want to play Connect the Dots, I'm saying the next adventure is going to revolve around Chult somehow. Oh, I'm just trying to imagine if this is going to be connected to the new ad- new adventures game could you imagine the monsters you're gonna have to face <laughs> dinosaurs finally dinosaurs uh, so, so yeah so yeah it 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 will be interesting to see actually what this means and, and that's all they said and um i will put this if you're watching the youtube version of this now this uh, photo is going to be up uh on the screen right now so you can see what we're talking about but yeah this looks like a very bustling city and uh, there is dinosaurs. It looks like people are riding dinosaurs. And in Chult, that does actually happen. There are uh, tamed dinosaurs that you can ride. And, of course, outside in the jungles of Chult, uh, those dinosaurs, you probably don't want to try to ride because they're going to eat your face off. Well, seeing how the, one of these things looks like an allosaur to me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what this means. And then uh, Greg Tito also did confirm that the announcement for the new storyline will happen at the very beginning of the stream. So they're not going to like go do along and make you watch a two-hour live, live stream to get the announcement. They're going to do it right at first. So if that's all you care about to see on the stream of Annihilation... It's going to happen within the first five minutes of the stream. All right. And is that a sauropod down on the left side? It sure looks like it. Oh, fun. <laughs> I'm telling you, Watsy is so good at their little teases. Yeah. <laughs> so go look at this video, look at this picture, and let the speculation begin on what exactly this all means. Well, then let's head into the new edition of Warhammer Fantasy. And I must admit that when I think of Warhammer, I always think of their miniatures game, and I never even thought of them having a role-playing system. I think you're not the only one in this. (laughs) Because, (laughs) to be honest with you, when I got this press release, I was like, oh yeah, there is an RPG based in Warhammer, isn't there? So yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, Cubicle 7 is going to bring a new edition of the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. This is uh, going to be later in the year, and I guess we'll find out more information. We don't know much about it right now, other than 
Dominic McDowell, who is the president and CEO of Cub- Cubicle 7. He's a big Warhammer and Warhammer fantasy fan, so he's excited to get the license and excited to update the RPG system. So I guess we'll see what happens, but if you're a Warhammer fantasy fan, new version coming your way. Whee. Then since we've seen what's in the dungeon, let's look at what's on the tabletop. And we'll begin with the Horror Board's Expandable Horror Game System. What? <laughs> that is a mouthful, is it not? So, have you ever sat around Pine Leaf and wondered, who would win in a fight between Jason and Freddy? I must admit that that has never crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody in the audience is shocked at this that it hasn't. But yes, this uh, Board's Expandable horrible game Horror Game System... They really need a better name. That is a horrible name and a really mouthful. But it looks just to solve that problem. Aww. Horror Boards is going to take the horror genre events from the screen and move it to your tabletop. You are going to find weapons. You're going to pick your slasher. And then, of course, uh, you're going to go on the board to search out victims and kill them in many, many, many ways. Okay. But w- so this is specifically slasher subgenre of horror then. Yes, it is. Okay. the Probably my least favorite <laughs> genre of horror. <laughs> yeah, but this game, it sounds pretty cool, and there are different victims. You will, it's basically like, like a card game with a board game element to it, because there is a board game, that's, that's the track that you move around, and that's how you, you find your victims. You will draw cards, you'll be able to find weapon cards, or you'll be able to upgrade your weapons. Uh, there's also going to be some plot twist cards that might change something. You, you might be able to do something special during your kill, or maybe the victim might do something that will maybe kill you. It depends on what the plot twist card is that you get. But this is uh, over on Kickstarter right now. And as of this recording, there is 31 days to go. They are at 3,243 of their $15,000 goal. So quite a ways to go, but they have 31 days to do it. That is Horror Boards, the collectible, expandable horror game system. And I need a drink after saying that whole thing. Yeah. That is <laughs> a, a drink to wet your throat or a drink to put you under the table? Maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> then let's head back to the seventh guest, the board game, on their post-Kickstarter updates. Yes, Trilobite Games, who, of course, uh, took the seventh guest video game. And turned it into a board game, and this was done on Kickstarter, and it was a very successful Kickstarter. They did pass along to me some updates. They said their backers are enthusiastically responding to the new add-ons and promotions. In just a couple of days, 180 backers have spent over $5,400 upgrading their pledges to the Kickstarter with additional add-on purchases. So they are very excited about that, so much that they've actually added some more add-ons you can get. Oh, good grief. (laughs) (laughs) And some of those add-ons include, you can get the Stoff Mansion model model kit, so you can actually have the Stoff Mansion sitting on your board game as you play. You may also add on a Sphinx Spirit Board, which is basically a, a fancy way of saying a Ouija board. That, too, you can add on, and if you played the video game, you'll know why you'll want that. That is actually one of the puzzles you have to use that. You can also get a Harry Stoff miniature as well, and a one-of-a-kind collectible figurine of, drumroll please, you. That's right, you, Pine Leaf. You could be a figurine in the game for only $900, but you could do it. Maybe I'll pass on that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so this, uh, did take off. As I said, they said their uh, Kickstarter was very successful. They are very humbled and actually kind of surprised at how well people have, uh, latched onto this Kickstarter and are excited about it. So things are moving along. Well, they have secured production for the game. They have chosen Panda game manufacturing. They are a leader in the field of manufacturing very high quality board games 
And for a distribution, they are going to go with Fun Again Games, which, of course, is another big name in the tabletop industry as a distribution partner. So they got one of the biggest names in manufacturing and the biggest names in distribution. So I would say it's pretty good that you actually are going to get your product if you back this Kickstarter because they've got two big names behind them. Well, at least that's hopeful because you occasionally hear some rather big horror stories of... Right, yep, yep. So yeah, when I uh, read that in the uh, release they sent me, I'm like, well, that bodes well for them that they chose those two to do the manufacturing and the distribution. So I think you're going to be all right. So you can go over at the article on ddoplayers.com and check this out if you want to see this. And you can also do uh, some late pledges to the Kickstarter as well. If you didn't get a chance to get it on the Kickstarter, you can actually uh, get in and order it as well as uh, add add on some of these cool extras. All right. Now, my next question is, any updates on the matter of the rumored Warhammer 40K new edition? June 17th, you'll have it in your hands. That is the long-awaited relaunch. No. You, the ones who want to play it will have it in their hands. Very true. If you're <laughs> a Warhammer fan, you're going to be standing in line, or you've already have it pre-ordered, so you'll have it June 17th. Okay. We, you talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Of course, this is a new edition, but the nice thing is you can still use your old armies, which I'll be honest, I'm surprised Games Workshop did that because usually Game Workshop wants to sell more products so they make you buy new. So good on them for letting you use your old armies. Well, yeah, th- how could they not let you use your old armies, wouldn't it? They... And this is Game Workshop we're talking about. Here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, there is that, but I mean... you. St- I mean, what, are they going to throw away all of the factions that already exist? Because otherwise, you'd still have these. Old- True. They have kind of done stuff like that in the past, though, where they've done like weird things to where it's like, oh, these are invalid. You can't use these anymore. What makes what can make a miniature invalid? I don't know. It's something about the rules they did. I, I, I will be 100% honest with you. I have never played Warhammer. I mean... You could maybe make the descriptions of them or the or the listing values of them invalid, but I can't see how you can make the metal miniatures themselves invalid. It does make never mind it's Warhammer as you said. <laughs> Gotta say it's Warhammer, it's games work up. Go figure. But yeah, like I said, uh, if you want to hear more about this, uh maybe two episodes ago we talked about this. But this does feature a brand new two hundred and eighty hardcover page book. And they are going to offer uh, the core rules as a free PDF download as well, which is the first time Games Workshop has done that. Yes, but it looked like it implied in there that the scenarios, though, are going to be in the core rule book rather, Correct. Yeah, rather the, than in the PDF. So. The PDF is going to get you kind of up and running, but it's not going to have the advanced rules, uh, any of the scenarios, and any of the background stories. So you're going to have to shell out money for that. But if you want to read the rules and see how it works, you can at least do that for free before you decide if, if you want to buy it. But June 17th, you will have the new Warhammer in your hands. All right. I have to admit, I've never played Warhammer, so. Yep, me neither. I've watched people play it. It looks semi-interesting to me, kind of. But I just, yeah, I've never, I've never understood the fascination with it. I can only remember playing... Well, I don't think I've ever played any full-scale miniatures game. I, Maybe there have been one or two light miniatures games, such as the old DDO miniatures game, which is more of a skirmish right. system than a yeah. miniature. Yep. yep. But, yeah, I've never played a full-scale miniatures game. Now, let's head on into what's on the screen. And Castlevania Cartoon is coming to Netflix. Yes, Netflix is uh, all of a sudden doing a lot of fantasy stuff. And they have decided to move Castlevania from the game realm into the anime realm. This is going to debut on July the 7th. When you the, say anime, you mean it's going to be a Japanese production, or you? Yes, it is a Japanese production, but it's in English, though. It's in English, though. 
but it's done in an, an anime style. And there is a teaser video that I have placed up on ddoplayers.com. You can check out. It looks amazing. It's 30-minute uh, episodes, uh, and the first season is going to be only four episodes. And then season two will air in 2018. So very short seasons, but it looks like they are really, really doing some high-quality animation on this, if you judge by the little teaser that they put up. And Netflix does say about it that Castlevania is a dark medieval fantasy following the last surviving member of the disgraced Belmont clan, trying to save Eastern Europe from extinction at the hand of Vlad Dracula himself. The animated series is from Federated Studios, which is very known for their Adventure Time cartoons, so if you're familiar with that, among other things. And it is written by some pretty uh, well-known people in the cartoon realm as well. So I think this is going to go well, but we can find out July 7th if you have Netflix, Castlevania, the animated series. So you're, of course, going to be rooting for Dracula, though. <laughs> of course. That's right. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Of course. <laughs> Let's look into our week in gaming. And, Drac, what were you up to? Not a whole lot. I oh. Real life, like, I've, I've been playing the real life game a lot. Is If you've listened to the past couple episodes, you'll notice that my gaming has not been a lot recently. And that trend continues. I did get some gaming in, though. Uh, of course, I play with you. We'll let you talk about what we did there, as you always do. But uh, I did take my druid, which is my level 9 druid slash whooplock, who I'm going to turn into a dragon lock at level 20. But right now, he's just my whooplock. Uh, started to do the Ruins of Thernal, that whole quest chains. I didn't actually start any of those proper yet, though. I just did the, if you're in the Ruins, there are three caves you can go in, and those are the Giant Lieutenants, the Giant's Lair, and the Giant Supplies. So I ran all those, I did those, and then hopefully this week I'll actually get in and start doing the Thernal quests themselves, the uh, ex excavation sites in Thernal. I just haven't, did, didn't have time to do that. But I did do those other quests. And uh, in DDL, that was really it, other than what I did with you. I did jump in and checked out uh, Black Desert Online. I'm going to do a review for the site on that. I did get a uh, press review code for that. So I played it for about three hours so far. It's okay. That's I won't spoil my review. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot to be desired but it's okay so i'll save it for the review but so yeah, yeah um it's is pretty this, i'll give it that wow it's pretty is it is what stage is this in right now early access give no it, it's wow. it's it's actually out it's it, it just oh. it's it's been out for year and a half two years maybe it's oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's it's just now on steam ah that, that's why so it's kind of you know quote unquote relaunching so yeah, it's just uh, and it, it is available on Steam now. Uh, it's on sale. I think it's still on sale. I'll have to check that before this podcast comes out. I might have to edit that out because I don't know if it's on sale anymore. But yeah, so uh, like I said, I'll sa save it for the view. Um, it does look stunning. Wow, is that a pretty pretty MMO? And if you like sandbox MMOs, you're gonna love this because it's total sandbox. You can do whatever you want, go wherever you want. All right. See, Black Desert Online is currently on sale for five ninety nine, down from nine ninety nine. Offer ends in forty hours and four minutes from the time I'm talking. Well, there you go. So it is still on sale. So yeah. But by the time we post this, it will not be on sale. So forget everything we just said. <laughs> it's like it never happened. <laughs> so people in the chat room. There you go. If you want Black Desert Online, you can get it for $5 right now on Steam for the next 40-something hours. And look for my review within right. a couple weeks, maybe. I'm going to play it a couple more yeah. hours to get a better feel for it. And but then I'll since, do my review. Since, since the base price is $9.99, it's not all that expensive. Of course, there comes the Traveler's Package and Explorer's Package oh, and this Lord. and this and this. <laughs> Because, spoiler alert for the review, it's a pay-to-win game. Oh, did uh, I say that out loud? Sorry, was was that out loud? It, it, My bad. This looks like it's a Korean game or something? It is. It's a very grindy Korean pay-to-win, grindy grind, grind fest game. Oh, okay, so it is 
the first thing I think of when I think of a Korean game night. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, if that doesn't make you want to go read my glaring review I'm going to do, I don't know what will. <laughs> they'll make sure they'll never send you another review copy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Way to burn that bridge, finally. Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> and really, that's uh, about all I did. I didn't play any tabletop at all. I was going to, but again, real life got in the way. So, ah. I'm hoping within the next couple weeks or so that my friend and his kids, uh, we're going to start uh, jumping back into our Storm King's Thunder D&D, though. We haven't done that for, like, ever, and I really want to see how that's going to go. Because if you remember several episodes ago, it's been a long time now, I had said I had actually designed a dungeon for them to go through to move the story along so i can't wait till they actually go through that dungeon and to see what happens and gums gang in the chat room is saying wow five dollars still might be too much Ooh, ouch <laughs> i'll save it for my review <laughs> <laughs> oh i feel so bad i feel so bad right now so i'm just gonna turn it over to you and let you just uh, tell us what you did this week and i'm gonna like commiserate my mi- my misery here for a while Very well, we will begin with what we did together, and that was with my No Morlock, level 18. We went into the 12, where we did the Palace of Stone and Acid Wit, and yes, that was rather straightforward. Anything you got to say about that? Uh, No, we've done... Well, actually, I can't remember if we've ever done Palace of Stone before. I don't think we did Palace of Stone before, I know I I don't remember that one. Yeah, I done it on my level 20 ro- well he's she's a level 20 now rogue but you know at the time of course she, she was at level so i just i couldn't remember for some reason the characters that we pr- played previously and then we we switched to our gnomes and we started over we skipped a bunch of quests for some reason i'm not sure what what we were doing or how we were jumping around but we're, we're starting to get into some of these quests that we have never done before and we should have done on the, those first characters hmm. I don't know how that happened. So yeah, I don't either. I I don't know what what we were doing when when we played those characters, but uh, Palace of Stone it had some really funny lines in it and some interesting things happened to you. I enjoyed the quest though, but like I said, I have d- done it a couple times before previous to that. Ah, so there's of course I also had my monk. Now, if I recall correctly, last week I said something about being dissatisfied with running around with a pure monk. So you did. Right. So therefore, I was going through my bank vault, and I noticed that inside of my vault, I had a plus five heart of wood. I have no idea how I got that. It must have been from from daily dice rolls or something like that. But therefore, I'd say, okay, plus five heart of wood. Let's see if I can get myself a few levels of warlock. So therefore, I went to the Reincarnation Grove, respect and all that stuff in there, and changed it from... 12 levels of monk to monk 7 slash warlock 5 and see how that operates. Now, at first, I thought I was going to have some trouble because I was not thinking about charisma when I was doing all my various attributes. But fortunately, I had put enough in charisma so that when I added together the bonuses you get at levels 8 and 12 plus what I got from my trait tree, I was able to scrun- scramble up uh, Charisma 14, which is not brilliant, but considering that I've got a monk as my other class... And not I, bad, yeah. Yeah, it is not bad. So therefore, that seems to be working along pretty well. I went back into the sands of Menectorin, and inside there, I did some of the landscape area, and then I w- once again went into Raid the Varkurum. It's a good place to test a build, since I was familiar with that dungeon. Alright, so far so good, because I was able to start using the Warlock stuff and the Monk stuff combined, seeing how well I could work together on that. So I th- then I went to the House Jurasco. So first I did Dreams of Insanity. Which, we were talking about this before the show started. How is it I have never done this quest. Well, uh, that I don't know. Because you, you had put this in the show notes, and I was reading this, and I'm like, what the heck quest are you talking about? Yes. So, th- so then I went over, 
on my lovely Google Foo, and I Googled it, looked this quest up, looked up the mess of the quest, the map map of the quest up, was reading about the quest, and I've decided I have never done this quest, and I don't know how that's possible because I love House Jurasco, and I always do all those quests because those are some of my favorite quests in the game. So how is it on all of my characters that I have? I have skipped this quest every time I've done House Jurasco. That I don't know. So tell me about this quest that I've never done because it sounds awesome, and now I want to log in right now and do it. Okay. Now in this case, you have to go through a rather through a bit of a core where you have. To, where I find myself finding a lot of. See, what am I finding all the way through there? Because we have these black things going all over the place that I've never quite figured out exactly what they're for, but I have a feeling that they were giving me debuffs if I ever came in contact to them. So whenever I saw one of those black things running around, I just ran in the other direction for a while and tried to avoid them as much as possible. And so I was going all the way through there, and you had to get... You know, I, I try to remember the details of what you're supposed to kill in order to get to the boss room. But in the end, you, you weave all around... Switch back and go through a separated decor back down the other side, and you eventually run into the to two rooms that have your red shrines. And once you take care of the things in red shrines and take care of the beholders in those rooms, you are able to open up a door into the main area. So you have to go through all this back way in order to get back into the starting room. And eventually, when you go through both ends and you pick up the seals that are in the area, you put them in there, and then you open up the room that leads eventually to the boss room. And it is in this boss room where you get one of the nastiest fights I remember in a while, and that is that you're in this room, and the first thing you run into is a pair of beholders, including a boss beholder. Well, that's always a good sign. Yeah, and let's just say the results were not very pretty. And it wasn't until later where I just started coming up with the idea of making sure I stay back when I'm fighting this. I know that's not the easiest thing to do when you're a monk, but now that <laughs> I got these five five levels of warlock, I was spending oh, yeah. some time doing that out. So I was wondering, why is my warlock blast purple instead of white? I eventually figured out is I forgot to do the sacrifice in order to activate the fey abilities. Oh, yep. Got to turn your pact on. Yeah, so I didn't turn on my pack, but I, I managed to do that after this one. But all right, I went around, and I got killed as just out of range of the res shrine. All right, fine. I've got a cake in my inventory. Eat cake. Go and fill up again. But unfortunately, my cleric is also down, so I have to go back in. I go in, fight them, fight them again, take care of them. Oops! I, that's right, I think I got... Killed the boss, but there was still another beholder to take care of. And that beholder knocks me down. And I was a little further out. I thought, this time I'm close enough to the shrine, right? <sighs> well, it so happens that I not only had a regular cake, I also had a enhanced cake in my inventory. Oh, so well, I that's handy. Enhanced cake. So I took care of the enhanced cake. I took care of the regular cake. I then managed to get in this side. This side, the first thing I did was touch my cleric, pick up the thing, run, Res up my cleric before I tried to find it. Then I went in, took care of the boss and all this stuff, and the spawns. I can't remember what they all, what the ads are in this one. You find them all over the dungeon, but some type of nasty thing you get in type, these types of dungeons. And they respawn. And a beholder, another beholder respawns every so often, as, as plus ads. Oh, good as God. you're going around trying to activate six switches that require intelligence. Now remember, I am a warlock slash monk. There are very few dump stamps available when you've got that combination. <laughs> no wonder this quest is called Dreams of Insanity. Right. Fortunately, I have my cleric. So therefore, I'm going around getting to the various switches, summoning up my cleric to fall behind me, and then trying to maneuver so I can Talk my cleric into clicking on that onto that one. So I had to go through this for all six of them. Actually, one of them I actually managed to click by itself. I don't know 
how I managed to click that one when all the others refused to do it. Maybe I had slightly lower intelligence requirements than the rest. But that was just way up on top. Because all these witches are in the rafters. Oh, good grief. So I'm doing parkour all throughout the rafters in order to reach these switches. And, of course, it's trying to get out of the way of the cleric. So I do, and, of course, when I'm getting ready to tell the cleric to do this, that's when the next resummons comes. So it's, oh, because you got to do all this parkour. And if I do slice missing, okay, okay, time for another resummons. So it was a real pain doing all this. Therefore, I highly recommend that you bring along somebody with a decent int if you're going to do this. And I always take enhanced abilities as one of my the things in my trait tree whenever possible. So therefore, even if the hiring cleric doesn't normally have enough to do it, because of the enhancement, I think probably had plus four in traits or something like this in the whole thing, I had plenty for my cleric in order to be able to handle this Whew. well and i can't i can't wait to do this quest now because this sounds just amazing yes and of course just for fun is after i finished all this i was just so happy to be done with it i immediately left the dungeon after this and then after as soon as i got out, i said maybe there was a final chest <laughs> oh no all that you didn't even get a sweet sweet reward yeah. oh no oh, after that's, that that's harsh yeah, after that, I decided to run End the Dead Shall Rise. Which is, which is a, one of my favorite quests in Jurassic. I love that quest. So I went through all that, and yay, got through that without any trouble. Especially considering I had no more cakes left. <laughs> it was just as well. And after that, I was looking at, what do I do next? That's level 12. I couldn't think of anything. I just could decided I was done with the sands. I had already gone through that landscape thoroughly, and I just didn't feel like going through there again, especially considering I've already hit the 750 spot for Knowles. Oh, wow. And I didn't feel, I think I had another 600 I would need to do in order to hit the 1500. So I just didn't feel like going after them anymore, and... It's always tougher to find the rest of them, and of course, the, the undead zone is full of mummies, which are always a pain. So we do know so you are a mum, mummy rot magnet, after all. Right. So, therefore, I decided to go into Giant Hold. So, first I did, went around on the landscape. All right, that went well enough. The following day, I went back into the landscape again, and I finally found a level 13 dungeon, because that has a mix of 13 and 14 dungeons. So, I found a level 13 dungeon, which was a cry for help, and I decided to run it on casual, so it'd be at level 12. And I recently got a reminder when looking at something else that the rules on bonuses and XP and stuff like this is based on the first time you do it at each tier. So therefore, me doing it on casual will not affect my XP when I next do it on normal. I was surprised, though, that I managed to get that you do get half normal, uh, whatever you call the, what do you call faction stuff in this game? Rep, what do you call the faction rep? The, yeah, rep. Oh, it is rep, okay. That, do, that you do get half faction rep from the normal level when you do it on casual. So therefore, I did get some rep on that. I was expecting to get zero on that, but I did get a couple of points on there. So I did a cry for help, got all the way through there. Then I did Foundation of Discord and got through there. And at that point, I hit level 13 and decided to add another level of Warlock. So now that makes me a level 7 monk, level 6 Warlock. So that's working all nice and well. So now it means I can go back and giant. Of course, as soon as I hit level 13, it says, oh, we should tell you about this wonderful place you can go to now called Giant Hole. Yeah, of course. You're like, but I was just there. Yeah, I was just there. So going back to this like casual thing, I have never ran a quest on casual. So how casual is it? Is it like really super easy or is it still sort of challenging or how much different is it? Because we have ran these quests on, and I think you and I just ran them on normal. I don't think you've ever, you've ever done them on hard to elite. So compared there to are normal. Some quests I've done, I don't think any of these, but. Right. So, compared to normal, how much different is it doing it on, on casual? Because, like I said, I have never actually ran a quest on casual. 
I am. Let's see. I think you're only allowed to run on casual. First of all, if it's of if it's a normal difficulty dungeon, you know, of average difficulty dungeon. Right. Because I noticed that the ones that are supposed to be a challenge say solo mode is not available in this, and apparently casuals is their name for solo mode because in my compendium it it says solo instead of casual on there, meaning that you. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's so I think they're making the assumption that you're doing this alone. Though I think you could do casual, and I don't know if you could do. It could be that the difference between casual and solo, it might be a subtle difference between them there. But I know that in the compendium, at least they call it solo, whether or not that whether that's a bug or whether that's intended, I don't know. But I don't remember how since I've never done soloed it at normal. I don't know exactly. Actually, it can't be. It doesn't consider it to be pure solo because it allowed me to have my hireling in there. So obviously, it is allowing groups in there. Because if you go to a regular solo dungeon like you have in the harbor, they won't let you go in there with your hireling. So let's see. I can't. Yeah, I can't remember exactly how difficult it is at normal. Maybe when I go in there next this coming up week to try Giant Hold and those try those quests at normal, we could see how that works. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see how much difference you, you, you think it made doing it on casual yeah, versus it, normal. I think it's a, well, first of all, it's one level lower. So you got to take that into account. But I think it might have been slightly easier than normal, but it certainly wasn't ridiculously easier. And I think if you're on casual, there are no limits on reusing shrines. Oh, okay, okay. So that is something to keep in mind also. So I think it's that and slightly weaker monsters together that would be do that would probably be I that would do it. There might be someone out there who's really familiar with the numbers or something like that that, that could leave a comment on exactly how much harder and easier. But I do remember that I believe I once took a level six through the through the temple at casual and I well, I still got butchered by Zuggetmoid, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, of course you did. <laughs> so there was that. But therefore, that seemed to work fairly well with the character. I reached level 13, and then I was in the marketplace, and I only had a short amount of time, so I decided, let's go into the Tower of Frost. Of course, I said that to Casual, since Tower of Frost is a level 14 quest, but I figured, okay, well... I love I love the Tower of Frost. Really like going into there, so I decided let's go into there at, at level thirteen, run it casual, and yeah. So I think I had an easier time with this than I had the first time I did it. I forgot what my level was and all that stuff. I think I was level fourteen doing it at a level fourteen quest the last time I attempted to do this. So therefore, it might have been a little slightly easier than with the thirteen at casual than it was at a Level 14 doing it normal. So that was my week in DDO. Right? Let's see. That, oh, no, no. Oh, that's right. I also have my tabletop. And on the tabletop, I was continuing my campaign in Deep Future. And I managed to get through, finish this with a total of nine wins all throughout from, let's say, about, about maybe half my games through it. And I, Sort of like I, I sort of like this game, have, having a lot of fun with this, seeing how the universe develops. But I ran out of the cards I was using, and I decided that I was going to start a new universe for next month and setting up with a new set of cards that I ordered a blank card. So I'm going to be using blank half-sized index cards for my next run through it. That sort of gave me an idea, and now I've got an idea how the game operates and stuff. Other things that I did is that I finally got a copy of the Lord of the Rings card game, and I tried that out. Which Lord of the Rings card game? The Lord of the Rings card game. This is the Living Card Game by Fancy Flight. Okay. that's. I figured that was the one you were talking about. Right. As far as I know, this is one of only... This is one of only two cooperative slash solo living card games I know of, the other one being the Arkham Horror one. So it's trying that, and it's, it's a little... It's a little tricky. I still don't have my... I don't quite fully, let's say, have it all around me. I, I've, As I said, I played through it once in there. And it seems like that when they did Arkham, they 
took that as a baseline set of rules and refined it a little bit. So I think they did some tweaking in there when they did Arkham, because I think the Arkham rules might flow slightly better. Either that or just not used to the rules for this yet. I have also decided to try one deck dungeon, see what I, I could do in a standalone game, meaning doing this as a standalone game without part of a campaign, because before I did this, did this long campaign where I was able to build up my character. So I decided, all right, let's try standalone one deck dungeon game, normal difficulty against a dragon, and see how I do. And I, had a little, I was playing the mage, and I had a lot of trouble with the early encounters because I kept on running with opponents that where mana was completely useless. But I did manage to get all the way to the point where to the second round of the dragon before I got killed. So that's not bad. And Friday, eh, yeah, I got to phase three and eventually got killed there. Probably the big thing is what I did today, and that is I just received my copy of Tiny Epic Galaxies Beyond the Black, which is the new expansion for it. And I will say that with this new expansion, Tiny Epic Galaxies is... Slightly less tiny and slightly more epic. <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> because what they add there... Are you familiar with Tiny Epic Galaxies? Yeah, yeah, i played it several times. All right, are you familiar with the expansion? Not the expansion, no. All right, in the expansion, the two big things that they add are pilots, and these pilots have associated with them these special ships. And what happens is if you have a pilot then that pilot has special abilities that that goes with them when you do it for example there could be a pilot that's allowed to that after you land on a planet in order to gain its ability then that particular pilot is then able to move into orbit immediately afterwards at no extra cost so little things like that so therefore different pilots of course have different abilities and they, of course, are worth a victory point each of those that you get. And you hire pilot pilots through pairs. In other words, if you have two culture, for example, then you could hire a... Then there's a particular type of pilot that you can hire that two culture, and you spend a two culture for your action, for your hiring action, then you could hire that particular pilot. You could also use three... Uh, if you have a match of three then you could ignore the ship type limitations for the pilot when you hire that pilot. So therefore, there's a little bit more flexibility in there if you are willing to spend three. But of course, that means spending three of your dice or two if you go with the particular pair you want. So you have to keep that in mind. The other thing that's added is an exploration zone and that you could go and try to explore deep space and find various things there. And some of them are... Really nice things that you can get, either worth a victory point or give you a quick special ability when you find them. And, of course, you occasionally run into hazards. And those hazards that, of course, may... For example, a hazard that I ran when playing a solo run today was that I had to give... I had to lose two of my... two points of one of my resources. I think, though, at the time, I, I don't think I had any resources, so it didn't matter. But, but yeah, you can lose resources or anything like this. But So you could, or could push your luck because you are allowed to look at one, say, oh, do I just want to rush past this one, or do is this the one I actually want? Because if we want something better, you could try again, but, of course, you might run to a hazard instead. So it adds a little bit of a push-your-luck element on that item in there. And I was then playing against one of the rogue galaxies and, and seeing how the rogue galaxies have changed in this particular setup. And in some ways, they're the same, play the same, but they, of course, now they take into account the new additions that are to the game. The pilots on what they do in order to grab pilots and, what they, and how they grab exploration. So those are now accounted for in the solo rules. So you have that in addition to it. So it looks like it's a nice, interesting addition to it if you want a little something to spice up your games of Tiny Epic Galaxies. 
We currently have 23 supporters on Patreon, and if you'd like to help TDO players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast to your choice, or even be a guest with us for an episode of DDO Players News. This week, we did not receive any emails, but if you'd like to send a funny, you can send it to the podcast at ddoplayers.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the Players Alliance at Players Ally, DDO Players at DDO Players, Draculetta at Draculetta underscore 72, and Pineleaf at Pineleaf Needles. The Players Alliance has four live shows. Every Monday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have DDO Players News. On the first and third Fridays of each month at 11 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have XP Quest. On the last Friday of each month at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Locho Academy After School. And every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Locho Players News. You can join us for our live shows at ddoplayers.com slash live. And don't forget to visit our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice Company. And if you've been looking for some cool dice, especially metal dice, you need to take a look at easyrollerdice.com and check them out. From our gun metal get collection up to the... Uh, <clears throat> To the upcoming Rose Gold Dice Collection, they have some amazing stuff. Also, right now, you can save some money on your dice, too. Go to EasyRollerDice.com and make sure that you enter the code DDO and check things out at 10% immediately. And that is all for tonight, and this is Pine Leaf Needles reminding you to quest responsibly. <laughs>